The reading is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 28 through to 31. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, asked him, which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus answered, the most important is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. For a topic I want to use, Jesus is the only way. The scribe in this text made a great first move. He came to Jesus, but he didn't come close enough. He came to Jesus to ask a question, but he didn't draw close enough to see the true answer. If he had, he would have seen that Jesus not only knew God's law, but obeyed God's law. He would have seen Jesus wasn't only a teacher, but a savior, a man like himself in appearance, but unlike him in divinity. He would have seen a perfect man there before him who loved God with all he was, who never disobeyed for a second and loved his neighbor as himself, headed to the cross to prove it. But the scribe didn't see that because he didn't come to Jesus as a sinner in need of saving, but as a scribe in need of a theological answer. How have you come to him? The difference between being near and being in the kingdom of God is simple, though I admit it's not easy. It comes down to this. What do you do with Jesus? Is he a teacher or a saver? Can you see him for who he is and what he did? Or do you merely admire him for what he taught? Standing before Jesus, this scribe never saw him for who he truly was. He who transcribed the Old Testament events about God's glory coming into the temple didn't see it when God's glory stood before him. He never saw the crushing weight of the law. He never realized the man before him was a rescuer, the son who, as Paul said in Galatians 4, God sent forth, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. Jesus was there to pull him from under the law by taking his place. This scribe remained a slave to the law, but how close he was to being a son, how close he was to finding in God, not only a great law giver, but a loving father. Jesus was there for that very reason, but he missed it. And because he missed it, he was outside the kingdom. He wasn't far, that's true, but to be not far is to be altogether out. Please, brothers and sisters, let's not miss Jesus. Let's beware of standing in the presence of God and missing the hope of the gospel. Let's beware of our knowledge and agreement, shielding us from repentance and belief. Let's not merely discuss matters with Jesus but fall down in worship before him, crying out for rescue. There is only one way to enter the kingdom of God. And the Bible, I believe, is very clear from cover to cover that the one way is faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. So here is the hope for any of us that feel not afar from the kingdom, but want in. As great as his teachings were, Jesus did not come only to give you tips on how to live. He did not come merely to show you how to be kind to others. He came to rescue you from sin and death. He came to save you from the crushing weight of the law. He came, as he said in John 10, to be the door by which you enter the kingdom of God. He came to have his flesh torn open so that by his blood you find cleansing and hope. He suffered the separation of the cross that you deserve to give you the peace of God that you don't deserve. So if you want to be a citizen of his kingdom, all you have to do is ask him to bring you in. He will gladly do it. The first step is knowing and agreeing with God that you are a sinner in need of a savior. You enter God's kingdom by coming to Jesus as your only hope 
and laying every other merit down at his feet. Your hope cannot be in your obedience. It cannot be in your character. It cannot be in your knowledge or agreement with God or anything else. Your hope must be placed in the power of Jesus Christ, crucified, raised, ascended, glorified, and yes, coming again. If it is anywhere else, even God's law, you stand outside the kingdom looking in, but you must be in because life is in there. That's not a matter of theological debate. It's the truth of the gospel, something to rejoice in and enter into. And if you have not yet come in, my brother or my sister, well, the door is still open. How are we inside? Let us pray. We thank you, God, for your word. Bless your word unto our hearts as we give honor and glory to your name. Amen.